Ah, oh, hello. When I used to run photographic holidays and courses for something like 25 years, the one thing I found difficult to teach the student about photography was composition, that is, how to see a picture. In fact, I would go further with this argument. I think it's something that cannot be taught. Yes, you can learn about it from books and magazines, but translating that information out there to the real world when you're taking a picture, that's an entirely different matter. I found something when I learnt about music. I passed music theory exams with distinction. But when I try to translate that knowledge to pianoforte playing, I had a problem. Anyway, I'm going to cast caution to the four winds, and I'm now going to go through a selection of images, which I hope will help you, and also perhaps most importantly, to achieve success, and if you like, prove me wrong. One of the hallmarks of creative photography is to photograph something that most people wouldn't notice, or if they did, take it in an original way. This happened unexpectedly at Chatsworth. The rainbow is for real, and not added in the computer afterwards, as some photographers are inclined to think. Despite it being a lovely sunny day, the wind blew spray from the Emperor Fountain across the lake, and, depending on where you stood, a rainbow kept appearing and disappearing. It doesn't matter how good your technique or camera is. For landscape photography, you are completely at the mercy of weather. Today we can change a sky in Photoshop, or tart up the colours. But I prefer not to insult my audience by giving them something that never happened, not even in the name or excuse of art. Reality is important, and capturing this morning mist was simply being in the right place at the right time. If I have cheated, it is taken from the grounds of my hotel. So I hope no one took a picture of me. Notice how I frame the mist with trees left and right, so that the eye is led naturally to the distant hill, creating essential depth to a two-dimensional image. Depending on where you live, the best shots are taken within a mile of your doorstep, so this is mine. Winter can produce better atmospheric effects in the morning than summer, and usually you don't have to get up so early. A windless day was forecast, with mist clearing later to a blue sky. Capturing that moment is essential. No time to hang about, so quick march! I am not sure about the composition, as the puff is leading the eye out of the picture, whereas the interest is on the other side. They are called angel rays, created by weather patterns. Do we need the photographer? I did take the shot again without him, and with less C. Always take alternative shots. Unlike film photography, it doesn't cost anything. So, you think this picture postcard shot is easy? Off you go then, and show me. Loch Leven is 500 miles from my home, so that could be a problem. And as the success of this shot is created by weather, you might have to wait a bit. I attach a lot of importance on working with weather, that is, listening to the forecast, and then photographing something that will work best under the imposed conditions. I don't make it up. Anyone can do that, and when they do, there are often telltale signs, and at times I do get dangerously near to it in post-production. Naughty. This was a rare moment. It is autumn, but unusual weather conditions blew sand from the Sahara northwards over Europe, dumping it on the south coast. Motorists weren't very happy, but I was, and knowing Sussex well, I could plan my 
itinerary accordingly as this weather phenomenon was forecast, so I got moving quick. Compositionally, I placed the sun over the boat. That works, but also most of the burnout in the water is now behind the boat. Image burnout was a major problem here, so I placed the stone in front of it. I am not a fan of HDR, so correction to the image was carried out in Lightroom, giving more flexibility, especially if things didn't work out. Even with today's high-tech specifications, perhaps we expect too much from our cameras when photographing subjects having a high dynamic range that we, when viewing, don't have to think about. A bit of important advice I gave to novice students, especially if they thought that their camera would do everything for them, was that our eyes and brain are far superior to anything that a camera can deliver. If they didn't believe me, this is the type of subject I would challenge them with, and it is not easy for me either. Landscape patterns is one of those subjects that many people miss, even photographers. There is a famous view in Swaledale, created out of dry stone walls and barns, but this one is further south in the Yorkshire Dales near Settle, and looks best by climbing higher. It is one of my favourites. I find the chaotic nature of the patterns attractive. Also, the use of a telephoto lens contracts the perspective, exaggerating the apparent chaos. It is an optical effect. So, am I hoodwinking you? But landscapes need not always be created out of the big view. If, like me, you are not weighed down by the bus pass, Get down on your hands and knees. I have found now that getting back up is the problem. At these close quarters, depth of field is doubly important, so to keep overall sharpness, I have switched to aperture priority at f11 with a wide-angle zoom. Increasing depth of field helped, of course, by Micro Four Thirds technology. Subjects like this don't come much more popular or photographed as Tower Bridge, and finding a different approach without people is a challenge. No time for photo niceties or correctness. Preset the camera, get into position, back against the wall, and snap away before anyone else gets in the way. It is a strange fact, but as soon as you plan to leave, something like this interesting happens that can so easily be missed. This happened to me at Ely Cathedral, and perhaps whilst looking for the Almighty, I saw this, the dying rays of the sun illuminating and projecting patterns from neighbouring stained glass onto the interior of the octagon. Perhaps it was a message from my God. It is a high contrast image with parts of it close to overexposure, which I didn't stop to correct, as I had more or less closed shop for the day. Take it quick, otherwise forget it. It is plagued with noise, but there are times when taking some kind of record is better than none. I did enjoy running those photographic holidays and courses and meeting many lovely people. Furthermore, I like taking pictures, photographs, with a chosen friend. But I have to confess to you that in order to be at my creative and artistic best, I have to do my photography, yes, I'm sorry, on my own. Furthermore, I travel light. Usually, usually just one camera and one lens tramping over mountain and moorland. Also, I hand hold everything, relying on the image stabilizer in the camera and lens for a sharp picture. Neither do I use filters, as much of that work can be accomplished afterwards in post-production, with the added benefit that you can backtrack afterwards if things go wrong. So, in a nutshell, when I take a picture, I don't like to put myself in a straight jacket. 
I like to keep things absolutely simple. After all, creative landscape photography, many other branches of photography, the art is always changing. So I have to have that facility to change my mind afterwards, even when things go right. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed looking at the pictures and that maybe you can benefit, you can learn something from it.